Hi everyone, I'm going to read you another story today from Pussy Simpkin and this one's called Pussy Simpkin Meets a Peacock Bird and it's by Linda Greenwood. Pussy Simpkin was sitting in the sun. He'd just finished washing his fine, fat, furry tail when he saw his friend Siamese Ching walk along the high fence. Good afternoon, Pussy Simpkin, said Ching. Good afternoon, Siamese Ching. What shall we do today? I'll take you to the park today. But first you have to get out of this garden. Siamese Ching dropped gently down onto the flower bed. Come here, Pussy Simpkin, he said, and let's see you jump. Pussy Simpkin stood up and shook his tail. It looked handsome, he thought, with the white bits all white and the orange parts bright and silky. He walked over to Siamese Ching and taking a deep breath, he leant on his back legs, looked high at the high, high fence and jumped. Me ho, me ho cried Siamese Ching as Pussy Simpkin plonked back onto the flower bed. That's no good. Try again. Pussy Simpkin tried again with a deeper breath, a bigger lean backwards, and he fell back onto the flower bed with a bigger plonk. Siamese Ching said, higher, higher, Pussy Simpkin, try again. Once, twice, three times, Pussy Simpkin tried to jump onto the fence, but each time he fell into the flowers. Siamese Ching showed his fat, furry friend how to do it, but he still plonked back. The two cats wondered what to do. It was no good thinking of going to the park if Pussy Simpkin couldn't even get out of the garden. Siamese Ching had an idea. Let's walk carefully round the garden, he said. And we'll have a good look at the fence. Maybe somewhere there's a gap and you can squeeze through. Sure enough, halfway down one side there was a gap and Pussy Simpkin began to squeeze his head, then his neck, then his front paws, then his body. But then he got stuck. Siamese Ching roared and roared with laughter. Oh dear, oh dear, you do look funny, he said. Pussy Simpkin didn't think it was at all funny. Don't just stand there laughing, he said. Push me or pull me, do something. And there he is, stuck in the fence. Siamese Ching gave a hard push at his friend's back. Pussy Simpkin turned and twisted, twisted and turned, and suddenly he was through the gap. Siamese Ching jumped up onto the top of the fence and down the other side. Pussy Simpkin looked at his tail. It wasn't so beautiful now, all muddy from the flower bed and all tangled from the fence. You can't stop and wash it now, said Siamese Ching. Come on, we're going to cross the road. Pussy Simpkin walked with Siamese Ching to the edge of the road. Siamese Ching showed his friend how to watch the cars rush by and how to look to the left and look to the right and look again to the left and make sure the road was empty before trying to cross. Then they marched quickly together to the other side and went into the park. Carefully now, whispered Siamese Ching. Don't let the park keeper see you. He doesn't like cats in the park. Pussy Simpkin followed Siamese Ching along a muddy path. They crept past a house where Siamese Ching said the park keeper lived and ran softly without a sound up the grassy slope. They stopped and Siamese Ching said, Well, Pussy Simpkin, how's this for a place to pay? As far as Pussy Simpkin could see, stretched beautiful green grass. It was bigger than the farmyard he'd lived in before. It was smoother and greener than the fields where he used to watch the birds in the country. It was surely the biggest, finest garden Pussy Simpkin had ever seen. Wow, meow, he said. This is very nice. Here's the park. The two cats walked all the way around this big grassy garden, looking under a little gate to see some flowers and over a low wall to watch the sparrows. Siamese Ching made sure the park keeper was looking the other way and they peeped at the fish pond and saw the golden fish swimming round and round under a fountain. Suddenly, Pussy Simpkin heard a terrible noise. <coughs> he arched his back and looked very frightened. What, whatever's that? he said. That's a peacock. A peacock? A bird with a tail of many colours. I don't like it, Pussy Simpkin said. I shall go and chase it away. 
He began to run towards the tree where the noise came from. Pussy Simpkin, kid, come back, cried Siamese Ching. The peacock belongs to the park. Leave it alone. Come back. I'm going to chase it away, called Pussy Simpkin, looking very determined. Don't fuss so. I'm very good at chasing birds. Pussy Simpkin reached the tree. He could see the dark shape up in the branches. Caw, caw, it said. Psst, Pussy Simpkin, in his fiercest voice. Psst, go away, silly little bird. Psst. There was a flutter of wings. And a rush out of the branches and down to the ground flew the bird. It was enormous. It was bigger than a pigeon, bigger than Pussy Simpkin himself, and his long tail stretched behind it like a carpet on the ground. And there's Pussy Simpkin, and he spotted the bird. Pussy Simpkin didn't remember seeing a bird this big before. His fierce voice was suddenly lost, and his proud, arched back lay flat. He began to walk slowly backwards and the peacock bird began to walk slowly forward saying Go away silly orange cat, you go away this is my park, go go and The peacock bird did a funny little twist and a flutter whoosh, whoosh, All of his feathers and there was a beautiful many coloured tail all spread out and standing up behind him Pussy Simpkin ran as fast as he could he didn't wait for Siamese Ching, he didn't look for the park keeper. He ran home past the grassy slope, past the park keeper's house, along the muddy path, across the road. He was in such a hurry that he forgot about the big high fence around his own little garden and he jumped right over it in one try. Pussy Simpkin looked at his tail, poor tail, all muddy and dirty and tangled. He began to lick it clean again. And Siamese Ching... Well, he was sitting in the tree where the peacock bird had been, watching it walk proudly across the big grassy park. And Siamese Ching was thinking of Pussy Simpkin and smiling a Chinese smile. And there was Pussy Simpkin when he was running away. And that's the end. Hope you enjoyed that next story. I'll read another one again soon. Take care. Bye.